All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Connecting the Dots with Dr. Ashai, a great place to be if you desire to take charge of your health so that you can live fully well and join doing what you love. Today, I'm here with a special guest, Dr. Mary Leung, a physician who is board certified in internal medicine, medical oncology, and hematology. She's also a certified life coach who is passionate about serving physicians who are stressed, overwhelmed, and burnt out. And today we're going to be discussing how burnout can affect weight, which ultimately affects our health. So welcome, Dr. Lang. So nice to uh, be here, and thank you for inviting me. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I'm really excited about this, but before we get into it, just three things. This is Connecting the Dots with Dr. Shai. I'm your host, Lola Shai. I'm a family medicine and lifestyle medicine doctor and owner of InTouch Primary Care in Sugarland. And here we offer stress-free health care with direct access to the doctor so our patients can get the care they need without inconveniences or delay that typically come in the healthcare space. You can learn more about our services on our website, intouchprimarycare.com. Also, if you have not already, hit that subscribe button. It helps us get the word out so more people can get this information. And lastly, as usual, always follow up with your own doctor for specific recommendations for treatment. All right, so let's get into it, Dr. Lang. So mm -hmm. you are board certified internal, internet hematologist, oncologist, and um, what would you like to share about yourself and how did you start addressing burnout? Yes, so um, I've been working full time as an attending physician uh, in uh, specializing in hematology and oncology for about 13 years now. And um, how I started with this uh, burnout journey is um, I myself experienced burnout. And uh, when I was actually experiencing it, I did not realize what it was. I was just exhausted. I was um, without much energy and uh, I did not really enjoy what I used to enjoy doing such as um, just getting together with my friends, my family, um, or just doing things I used to enjoy. And just thinking back, because um, I had these long hours at work, and um, I barely have time to sp spend outside of work, um, not to mention um, barely have time to spend with my family, that I just felt um, physically, emotionally, and mentally extremely exhausted. So that was the burnout. And um, what happened was that I came across this thing called life coaching, which transformed my life. Um, there I worked with a coach and um, who, who also happens to be a physician. And together we um, she guided me to uh, really to a journey of uh, going home earlier than uh, before. Um, and in the past, I was just charting, doing you know all the administrative work, patient calls, all these other things several hours after the last patient was seen. And now I am going home, you know, over, you know, at least two hours earlier than uh, what I used to do. So um, because of that, I just want to share this um, knowledge and this uh, powerful tool of coaching with other physicians so we all can you know, enjoy our work, enjoy seeing patients and uh, go home on time and have a really good work-life balance. Wow, yeah, that is unfortunately so common within the physician community, right? The burnout. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that you've been able to get 10 hours back every week that's you know <laughs> that will yes. make everybody smile right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah okay so let's get more into it so most people understand that burnout can affect our mental health but it also affects our physical health can you speak more about this especially pertaining to weight yes so you know ultimately our mind and body they're all connected so um when we're you know burned out meaning that we just have this chronic high level of stress, there's several things that are going on in our body. So hormonally, uh, there's something called cortisol. And a cortisol uh, level is high 
when we're stressed. It's kind of like to equip us to do this fight or flight response, you know. Um, and uh, so when cortisol is up, the other thing that happens is our glucose, you know, our sugar level, it's also elevated because, you know, just to get our body ready for, you know, say to run away or to fight or, you know, do something. And when, when the body perceives that the threat is over, the glucose level goes down. And because of that, the cortisol is still there. And the cortisol, you, you know, it's saying to our body and say that, hey, we need some sugar because otherwise, you know, you will be uh, low sugar, you may pass out. So what happens is then we would want to grab a food to eat, especially the high carbohydrate foods. So when we do that, and especially when we have chronic stress, chronic stress, meaning that we have chronically high cortisol level. So meaning that we'll always want to crave more of the high sugar foods. And this happens, that causes us to overeat. And also these carbohydrates get stored in abdominal fat. And that's the not so good fat. And uh, it's hard to shed. So, so that's kind of the hormonal level. And emotionally, because we're so stressed, you know, we all want to feel good. Mm -hmm. And um, so in order to feel good, because we're stressed, we tend to look for external sources to make us feel good. So comfort food. So that's a very common thing to, you know, to to grab and eat. And, you know, a lot of comfort foods, you, you probably know, it's <laughs> high carbohydrate foods, like, I don't know, you know, ice cream, mac and cheese, just to give you a couple examples. So, so that also perpetuates the cortisol, you know, the hormonal level. So they're all, you know, um, uh, interconnected. The other thing physically is because you're so stressed and you're exhausted, you know, physically and mentally, you don't feel like moving. You don't feel like exercising. So what happens is your metabolism will go down because you have less physical activity. Mm -hmm. So, so that also promotes weight gain. And lastly is mentally, is that, you know, when you're so mentally exhausted, you kind of don't discipline yourself as well. So normally you may tell yourself that, hey, I don't want to eat that piece of cake, but when you see it in front of you, when you're stressed, you're like, well, you know what, let me eat it. And so, so without the strict boundaries and plus you want the comfort. So all of these things add up to, you know, um, uh, not so good for your health and, you know, weight gain, or you have trouble losing the weight. Right. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Those are really, really helpful. And um, I think sometimes we underestimate how powerful um, these urges that we have are <laughs> yeah. and how much the body, you know, works, to, the body tries to maintain a certain um, level of satisfaction and it's going to drive you to do that mm -hmm. so so what are practical tips though so that people that with burnout um, what can they do so they can achieve their desired weight yeah of course the first thing is really to recognize that you're stressed you're, you're in a burnout phase you know um, so when you're you know really feeling physically, mentally exhausted, you know, that that's kind of a sign that you're probably in some degree of burnout. Um, and the first thing really to do is to pause and um, uh, to take a step back and, and just give your body, give your mind a rest. You know, it can be just simply walking away from what you're doing, like, um, taking a walk or just do something entirely different. So your mind and body have a chance to take a break because that's the, the time that you can get recharged. Because you know what? We cannot give what we don't have. Mm -hmm. And so if we keep on giving and giving, you really literally burn out and run dry. And that's not a good feeling. And you will collapse and maybe even have some other physical manifestations such as, you know, headaches or getting, you know, really sick. 
Mm-hmm. So, so that's kind of the first thing is really to pause and recharge. The second thing is um, to practice mindfulness and just to look at your situation um, without a judgmental eye and um, uh, just look at where you are and, um, and don't argue with the reality of where you are, but just think of, okay, you know, be a little bit curious and find out what can I do? You know, um, instead of I can't do this or I'm stuck, just be open to say, okay, you know, this is where I'm at. What can I do about it? And sometimes you may need someone to help you and that's totally okay. So just be um, aware of your surroundings, be in the moment. So that's the mindfulness. Uh, The other thing is to prioritize your day. Um, yes, we, we all have the same number of hours and, uh, uh, you know, it's good to just plan ahead and, um, plan what you must do, you know, kind of the top priority, few things that you, you know, you must do, do them first. They may be the hard things, but also in the beginning of the day, you have more energy mentally and physically to do those things. And um, and then next is you do the very important things, but kind of like going down the tier of importance to do and just give yourself some grace if you don't get to do all the things you want to do. Because, you know, we, we tend to, you know, put a lot on our plates and uh, um, and sometimes we don't realize that, oh, there are actually a lot more things to do in a day. And that's okay. You know, we learn and gain from our experience and um, uh, we just prioritize and plan it better the next time. Um, And I think the last thing is very important is to take care of ourselves. And Mm -hmm. part of it is, um, I think that's really helpful for everybody is to um, make some time to exercise, and um, uh, because that can, you know, increase your metabolism and also the endorphins help relieve stress. When you exercise, you release the endorphins in your body. Um, and sleeping is very important um, because, you know, when you have a restful night of sleep and it's preferably seven hours, mm-hmm. um, then you get, you know, again, another chance to recharge, to refuel. And also um, you'll feel more refreshed and have a fresh mind, you know, in the morning to start the day. Right. Thank you. Yeah, those are all very, very important things. You know, it's interesting because a lot of what you talked about has to do with mindfulness, like the mind. Um, We need to pause. We need to be mindful. We need to prioritize what's important. And then we need to take care of ourselves. And I think sometimes um, what help, what um, causes stress with people is they start from the other side where they're starting to restrict their diet or restrict their um, their fluids or restrict something. And then it's mm-hmm. so hard to do because they're not, they haven't started with the mindful part yet. So right. I think that that's very important that, you know, when people are trying to relieve their burnout, that they actually start with the mindfulness part mm-hmm. first, because yes. that's what's going to drive and sus- help them sustain the lifestyle behaviors that are needed to, to be successful. Exactly. All right. So um, some people have experienced burn, burnout already. They've already made some changes. And um, what are things they can do to help maintain those changes to prevent relapse? Because we know how we are as humans. <laughs> we can do something for some time, but after a while, many times we kind of go back to our old behavior. So what, what are some tips for that? Yeah, so... I think one of the important things is really, you know, as we talked about uh, just a little while ago, it's uh, to practice the mindfulness and be intentional of what you're doing and and just really remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. It's like, okay, um, I want to keep my weight say the the way that it is right now um, at my goal weight because what is it you know um, because I want to stay healthy you know or I want to you know really have more years with my family you know any one of those things that you, you believe that it suits you it's more of an, um, a positive belief 
that you hold on to. And I think, you know, just keep that in mind, um, you know, whenever you want to quote unquote relapse or um, say if you're, you know, really getting into um, the stressful um, mode and, and want to grab some comfort, for example, just remind yourself that, hey, you know, I'm not restricting myself from getting that food, but I'm actually practicing um, healthy habits so that I can, you know, stay healthy, keep my weight and uh, do, you know, be more efficient in my work. So wow. I think, you know, that um, uh, that part and just, you know, make it a habit and and eventually just like, you know, someone who is learning how to drive, you know, in, in the beginning, you kind of um, have to think about, OK, where's the, you know, gear shift? Where's the the brake, the gas pedal, things like that. But after a while, you know, it's automatic. You just know how to drive to get to where you want. So it's the same thing with, um, you know, just being healthy and um, keeping your weight is to practice what you do every day. If you do this enough time, it's going to be automatic. And you know that I am um, keeping these healthy practices because I want to stay healthy. I don't want to get sick. I want to, you know, be there for my family, for my friends and so on and so forth. Yeah, thank you. That's helpful. So having a strong why, defining it and framing it in a way that will encourage you to keep doing what needs to be done. And I think the other thing I'll add to that is also just like you said, the mindfulness, making sure that you're doing that daily to remind ourselves um, so that it's reinforced <laughs> over time. Yes. And then it's easier to overcome mm -hmm. uh, temptations <laughs> when they come. Exactly. So, yeah. All right. This has been really great. So do you have anything else that you like to share? Any other advice or quotes so that you want to leave with our listeners today? Yes. And I think um, one of the most important things that I've learned is to practice gratitude. And, um, you know, just be thankful. I think when you wake up in the morning, um, be intentional about being thankful of something like it can be something simple like I'm thankful that I'm alive I'm thankful today is a beautiful day you know anything and um, because of you know the practice of gratitude you see how much you have you know it's um, the abundance mindset as opposed to focusing on what you don't have or what is not according to your will and I think you know with that to start the day um, everything just goes smooth it doesn't mean that things will you know be easy you know we're human beings in this imperfect world and we're we ourselves are imperfect and that's okay but um you know just really be able to focus on the positive things and have a positive attitude just makes things so much better great yeah thank you that that's been that's a great one to that you shared i actually have a gratitude bucket here Oh, <laughs> I like it. So I, I, I definitely have found that helpful as well. Um, yeah. How can people find you? So can you tell us where and we'll have all this listed in the in the chat as well? Yes. So um, my website is www.shiningwithgratitudemd.com. And uh, I have a blog post that I post twice a week. And it's www.shiningwithgratitudemd.com forward slash blog. And you can email me at shiningwithgratitudemd at gmail.com. I am also on Facebook, Mary Lung and LinkedIn, Mary Lung MD. Awesome. So you've been listening to Dr. Mary Long, and um, she's a hematologist, oncologist, internist, and life coach. So if you're a physician and you are burnt out, this is the person to go to. And uh, I know there are a lot of physicians that are burnt out. So and um, other people can really also benefit from the information that she's shared today. So thank you very, very much for sharing. And thank you so much for having me today. Yes, of course. All right. So thank you for listening. Remember to subscribe, share with someone that may need it. And if you're in the Houston area and you're seeking detailed thorough care, come join our membership practice at InTouch Primary Care. 
you can enroll on our website, www.intouchprimarycare.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Thank you.